And you can minus that window if it's in your way. Hello, and welcome to another week from the Kingdom Games Studio. I am Chris, your humble community servant. Steven had to step out, so filling in, we have character artist extraordinaire, Brandon. Hello. And today, Brandon is going to grace us with some cool little ZBrush stuff. He's going to kind of show you the ins and outs of sculpting and chat with us a bit, so this should be pretty exciting. So, uh, how are you feeling today, Brandon? What have you been working on this week? Um, a lot of... Uh a lot of hair and okay. uh, female armor sets. That's exciting. For a new expansion coming out Ooh. soon. So, what are the what kind of challenges are presented when you make like female armor? Is it just well, the biggest challenge was actually making female variants of pretty much every armor set in the five game, which is you know. Dozens. Which is, we're talking about thousands, no, <laughs> it's about, it about like 30, 40 different armor sets and different variants. That's amazing. Yes. So, and you had to make all those, they're, they form to the female body, look kind of cool, if you need. They actually work. Um, and like, just coming up with a new rig, a new female rig for a female enemy and, and player type. That's so awesome. So what do we got here? We got some clay. So we've got some clay. Um, today I'm going to model a gumdrop. That's amazing. Um, all right, I'm done. So <laughs> I, think we're, I think we're done for the rest of the uh, Twitch. You are. So we can just talk. You are a saint. You are a saint, Brandon. Um, um, like one thing I used to do a lot like during my lunch break was just create like lunch heads. So it's basically taking a, a shape like a sphere or a, uh, or a cube and, and sculpting it into... Various enemies, creatures, warriors. You that's awesome. It. And you know, this this Twitch stream goes for like an hour, and that's yeah. pretty much the same as a lunch break. So it's a well, I just try this out. Okay, so that's cool. So you just kind of kind of free kind of free up a little bit, freestyle, and see what you come up with. And it's kind of like just kind of like a sketch. It's just three D. Pretty much. That's awesome. So you know, for a good deal of the stream, you're probably seeing me just trying to figure things out and not really have an idea of what I'm making until probably the end. That's so, awesome. And that's what's fun about it. So in order to distract you from your glory, I have many, 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 many questions about so many things. Number one, of course, is were you playing Overwatch this week? Because I was. Wasn't I? I, Where I, you? Love, I love it. I've been playing uh, Overwatch on both the PS4 and PC. Got a preference? And I can say my preference would be the PC because I suck at playing <laughs> Twitch games uh, with a mouse uh, keyboard. Like, I don't, I don't know how to do the sprint, you know, pressing shift and and then trying to put your pinky on the V. And the really? And, yeah, oh, I'm the opposite. I can't keep up with, um, like, the turn turning radius. Like, someone's behind me. I'm never quick enough with the, uh, the camera on the sticks. I gotta use a good mouth. But who, who should go to? Who your I was characters? playing with, and I'm probably gonna say this wrong. I think Tribjorn, Tribjorn. the little dwarf guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he was pretty the awesome. guy. Yeah, 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 like the engineer type. And uh, Junkrat. I like love Junkrat. My... I love me some Junkrat. Like I was putting some pain on some people. Um, yeah, that tire is vicious, man. <laughs> that is a vicious, vicious character. I'm all about Reinhardt. Just I, stand on the front of the cart. That's the thing. I couldn't do anything with Reinhardt. Like, I felt like every time I came up with Reinhardt, I'd die every say, two minutes. Because oh, he's like a weird, like, hybrid support attack defense. Yeah. So you got to be careful. But, yeah, because the shield isn't in... I mean, the shield's not going to last forever. And you got to let it off because it won't recharge unless you let it down. So you got to be able to toggle it and get the effective, like, blocks in. Okay. But I'm a huge Reinhardt fan. Junkrat's great. I love Widowmaker. Oh, I have so much fun with Widowmaker, man. I was just nailing people right out of spawn. Bang, 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 bang. And I played with her for a little bit. I'm like, I, I would say my favorite character of all, just lips-wise and style-wise, would probably be... Was it Diva? She's like the, the girl with the mech, the little anime girl with the mech. Oh, yeah, what is her name? I think it's Diva. Like, she's pretty cool. But I love... Again, I suck at some of these shooters and... <laughs> well, what I love about her is... The, the the versatility of her to be like, yep, I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw a suicide mech in there, mm -hmm. and just run away, and it's just what is her name? It's not. I think it's Diva. It's like yeah. DVA or something. Yeah, like DVA. That. You're right. It's Diva. Oh, and May. I was having a ton of fun with May, just freezing people like crazy. I was uh, trying to figure her out. She is such a troll character. She's told troll like, run up, 
freeze, 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 freeze solid like a junk rat or somebody <laughs> like that and just drive people insane until they rage quit. Oh, man. So she's the Dan of uh, Overwatch. Like, if you don't know, Dan is the troll character in Street Fighter. Gotcha, yeah, yeah, He's definitely. He's got the little pink um, <laughs> gi. Yeah, yeah, with the, with the, the shackles. Yes. yes. If you get beat by Dan, um, you're pretty much a noob. I actually like playing Dan. I'm just going to throw that out there. It's one of my go-to. I'm using the guy to get beat by Dan. <laughs> 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 and already I can start to see, like, you just, you kind of create the silhouette, like, quickly. It's been, like, five minutes, and you can you know, really kind of see the musculature and everything already, and it's great. Yeah, that's what I'm going for. I don't, I don't know if I want to create a hero or if I want to create a, a creature, um, but we'll see. Oh, I'm excited. Stay tuned after these messages. Yeah. We'll be right back. By the way, we are live from the King of Games studio in Austin, Texas. Of course, the game is Five Guardians of David, and it's out now on Steam. And you can pick it up on a variety of platforms, including Amazon, Green Man Gaming, etc. Um, Brandon, I know you are a big Star Wars fan. You worked on the Old Republic. Yeah. You worked on the Old Republic, which is really exciting. And uh, I gotta know what you think of the Rogue One trailer, which I think is about a month ago now it came out. Like what? I, I didn't think get it's to... awesome. Okay. <laughs> I, <I'm>... Elaborate. <laughs> it's... Come on, man! Like people on foot running towards walkers, walkers shooting down while they're shooting up, oh, and you know that these people are gonna probably survive or not survive. Yeah. It's awesome. Like who yeah. wouldn't like that? I'm very excited. Rogue One looks really cool. Uh, and they're not Jedi's. That's. Yeah, no, no, Star Wars Without Jedi is really interesting, because we had, like, that's what was so cool about, like, the original Battlefront, was it's just like, hold on, you can have the heroes that'll come in, like, do the Ultra stuff, but, like, no, let's really investigate, like, the, the class warfare between these two. Mm-hmm. Oh, so much fun, man. Yeah, the thing I like about that, it makes me, it makes me feel like I could actually survive in the Star Wars universe. Unless you're a Stormtrooper, because you wear the armor and you get, get one shot. Yeah. By body shots. I never understand that logic. I'd probably be the the stormtrooper that stays far back because I know I'm not going to hit anything. Yeah. So I just won't get hit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what was it like working on the Old Republic? What'd you do on that? Oh, it was awesome. It was probably one of my great gaming experiences. Like, met a lot of lifelong friends. Um, learned a lot. And like the biggest, the biggest thing of all is just being able to see my name in the credits of the Star Wars anything. Yeah. So seeing, just looking and seeing Brandon J. Bruce in the blue text in the black background, yes. it's awesome. This is achievement unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've been playing Street Fighter lately because I know they were doing some tournaments at DreamHack. Awesome. I I have definitely been playing some Street Fighter. Another game that I'm not good enough to be in a tournament for, but I play for the love of the game. Like, uh, I guess you can say something like uh, a retired uh, NBA or NFL vet would say. But, um, yeah. What do you think of the character art in that game? Like, from, because it's super stylized, obviously, Mm -hmm. and it's like got that weird 2.5D. I actually like it. Like, I I was digging, like, what they were doing in Street Fighter 4, but I really like the stuff they're doing on the real even more. Because there's there's more of a harder edge. Yeah. Yet it doesn't have as much of the tune shading, mm-hmm. so it seems like they're doing like a little bit more texture and shader uh, massaging. But it's it's pretty cool. That's awesome. Like my favorite Ryu of all time, man. Sexy Ryu. Really, <laughs> really. He's got like a little gruff. You got the um, the beard and and all of that going on. That is an endorsement, if I've ever heard one, <laughs> for the best Ryu of all time. I've not picked. I have not picked it back up since they released Guile. Mm-hmm. But I will soon. I want to see what's going on with Kyle. And dude, Fang. That's all I gotta say. That's a oh. cool character. Um, what else have you been playing lately? Just kind of swap um, between. You've been a little busy. bit of Overwatch. Um, I'm still trying to play Witcher. I still need to beat the original campaign so I can jump on and do I some expansions. I haven't even started playing Witcher yet. I haven't even started yet. It's been out almost a year. I haven't even started. Dude, I gotta, you have to. I gotta get it, I know. I'm it's, way far It's behind. probably like my favorite game since Red Dead Redemption. Like it's that good. So you like the massive worlds. And then correct me if I'm wrong, I think they said their next game, which is um Cyberpunk yes. seven ninety eight, Cyberpunk or is it Cyberpunk? I think it's just Cyberpunk. Yeah. They said it's 
four times the size of Witcher 3 or something ridiculous like that like for me I love the the sci-fi setting yeah and just think you know like if you like Witcher in a Star Wars y yeah. Blade Runner y type setting I think you're gonna be in heaven you couldn't you could not go wrong no. what they're doing and then Red Dead Redemption I know just leaked uh some somebody leaked some files, which is always bad what? news. Yeah, you didn't see they leaked. I am, uh, I'm behind. Now, they leaked but... a couple screenshots and pull them up. Leaked a couple screenshots from Red Dead Two. It is oh, well, I guess it's Red Dead Three, but it is in development and it looks amazing. So I'm guessing this is going to be. I guess they're going to officially announce it at E3 this year. Uh, I don't know. They just let's see. Fake or real? Possibly. Oh, they're saying it's concept art, but it is. I'll take it. Yeah, I'm seeing. <laughs> just so it, just so I know it's real. That's that's all I need. Did God of War's concept artist release some images of Red Dead Two? Yeah, they've all been taken down. That makes me think they're real. I mean, it was. You wouldn't believe this stuff, man. The reflections in the water were just crazy. And that's the thing, the 360 game was looked awesome as well, so... Trusted source claims it is the real deal. Alright, here's some concepts of the size of the map. We're definitely getting trouble for looking at this out. Well, no, I'm not going to show it on the stream. Okay. <laughs> Just so Sorry, you know, guys. it may or may not exist. It is gorgeous. But yeah, so Red Dead Redemption 2 seems to be in progress, and it's gigantic. Nice. Gi gigantic. So I'm wondering, like, is it going to take... Well, I don't want to, like, spoil like, the original story, but I'm wondering who the main character is going to be in, in this game. Good question. Yeah. Nobody knew. It's a secret. And further along, he just continues along. Now we're seeing some eye sockets, some cheek structures. Yeah, just... About 15 minutes in, and we're already seeing some... We'll have, we'll have a little bit more after these messages. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After these messages, yeah, I've, I've looked at a lot of um, Saturday morning cartoons, so I've okay. been my life been Joe? very yes, GI Joe, GI Joe, GI Joe, yeah. some He Man, put some He Man in there, some some mask, some Thundercats. Oh, yeah, those pups say Thundercats. Some I can never, tech. I can never figure out if Thundercats is appreciated or loathed because I want to say people hate it, but. People seem to dig it. It's got that campy, campiness to it, kind of like Captain Planet. It's just like because he's a hero. <laughs> yeah. He's gonna take pollution down to zero, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll quit. That's all good. Um, did you see the Ratchet and Clank movie? I didn't. Like I forgot it was yet. out. Like um, we went out to go see um, Captain America. Oh. You did see and that. I, I saw it. They had like a Ratchet and Clank movie, and I yeah. was like, "Oh my gosh, I gotta go see this!" I haven't seen it yet either. I gotta see it this weekend. I've been. That's my that's my Star Wars is Ratchet and Clank. I love that series. I grew up with it. It means everything to me. Really? Yes. Ratchet and Clank, I think, is the best platformer of all time. I think it kills all the platformers. See, I think my problem with Ratchet and Clank. Was I, was I used to always get it mixed up with Jack and Daxter for some reason. Yeah, I can I can see that happening. Like, I would think that Jack and Daxter, Jack, uh, see, I can't even say it. Jack and Daxter was Ratchet and Clank, or Ratchet and Clank was Jack and Daxter. Yeah, because they both had like yearly releases. Insomniac and Naughty Dog have that kind of weird sibling rivalry, friendly thing going on, mm -hmm. where it's just like they hide demos of each other's games and the code <laughs> and stuff like. But yeah, I think, uh, oh man, uh, I was going to buy a PS4 just to play the new Ratchet and Clank game, because it's a remake of the reboot of a remake or something, I don't know how to quite phrase it, but mm -hmm. basically they remade the first game, but also expanded it and made it new. Okay. Yeah, so it's it's not a, comp so it's all the original game content, but also made way bigger, so they like redesigned the levels to be, I don't know, like, Twice as big, for example, it's Metropolis. I will say this: like the art looks awesome. Yeah, oh yeah. I'm waiting for the console bundle so I can go buy it. Justify, <laughs> you know, another t another toy I have to justify. A, re a reason for you to buy a PS4? Yeah, I need to. Just, just right. I can't. I can't believe you waited this long to get a PS4, man. I bought a 360 when Resident Evil 5 came out. 
I bought a, an Xbox 360 for Resident Evil 5, and then I eventually traded that to play, after I played through Red Dead, I, well, not played through, I didn't beat it, but I played a fair amount of Red Dead, by like 40 hours, and then traded it for a PS3, PS3 so I could play Ratchet and Clank, it was years ago. Okay. And then I gave them all away. And now I've been waiting, I've been waiting, and Ratchet and Clank is my reason to pick it back up again. I don't know, like I've, I think I'm, I don't know if I'm in the minority, but like I've, I've gotten to the point where I stopped trading in games, and yeah. So I have like a box full of like 200 Xbox games. Wow. And PS3. That's a nice collection. It's a nice collection, but I just recently moved and. Oh, that was fun. It then. kinda, it's kinda making things hard. Like I can't put stuff up. Yeah, there's a storage. There's no storage space. Well, I mean, people used to collect comics, that would, and a lot of comics are way worth way more than some game. Most games, like there's very few games that are super rare and worth a lot of money. Like you know. Obviously, like, Ocarina of Time always goes for a fair price, and like, there's certain Zelda games that are super rare, limited edition things, but... So did you collect comics? Like, I, I went through a phase where I collected baseball cards and comics, but I felt like it was too much of a job. The way... Like, rather draw or something, you know? Uh, uh... My, video pre games. my previous boss actually collected comics since when he was a kid, so every once in a while he'll be like, you know, I'm gonna buy a watch, so he'll... To, like sell he still he has comics valuable enough that he could sell the comics sell a couple comics and you know go buy like a you know a nice watch or something it's like that is amazing that you've had stuff since like you know you've been holding on to these since the 70s all bagged and ported and you have to send them out and get them rated by um people and they seal them in the bag and give them like a square out of 10 i think it is and they grade them and stuff and then you can base the value on those grades it's an incredible subculture <laughs> just like crazy crazy amounts of like pawning and stuff like that um yeah I've been holding out my PS3 and oh PS4 I should say I've been holding out because all I have now is my actually my, my rig's dead so I have a little scheme oh, I have yeah. a scheme box running windows did and you actually I, build the steam box or did you buy it as a I steam bought box? an Alienware Alpha the first gen of them they did like a like an Amazon closeout sale on them around okay. Christmas time so it was like I don't know, less so you kind of looked out yeah, yeah, I lucked out, and it's it's been awesome, man. I, I've been very pleased with it. I've been playing, like, I was able to play Just Cause 3 on it at, like, 720, not 1080, but solid, it's like, solid performance on it. Nice. Like, this is pretty awesome. I'm a pretty big fan of it, so it's been a good backup machine. But So are you, are you using the controller, or are you doing, like, mouse and keyboard? Uh, it depends on the game. Overwatch, mouse and keyboard... Something like Tomb Raider, just calls. We'll use a. a I like an X. I like the X Bone controller. Okay, so you don't use a Steam controller. Uh. Not doing that. It's okay. It's it's definitely not my preference. Okay. I'm, I'm I like the the meatiness of the X Bone. I can't I actually don't like the PS. I'm so not used to the PlayStation controller. It's too wide. Mm -hmm. it doesn't have that, that like. It doesn't have the head trapezoidal. That you're yeah. For, yeah. I like that meat. Like my, the original Xbox controller. Remember those? Those things were fat, man. Those were just fat and meaty. It felt really. Yeah, good I didn't like that. the original, original, but the first S controller. Like, yeah, I, I think that about. was like the first perfect controller. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like I, I think all controllers are based off of that controller. Oh, it's a brilliant controller. It's amazing. This guy. So mm -hmm. I'm like trying to like dude. just block in some uh, some lips. And I don't know if I'm gonna stick with this. It's kind of got like a funny shape to his head, but I might go with it. Never roll with it. See yeah. what happens. Let's see what's gonna happen, man. Yeah. No, I dig it. It's been 20 minutes, and you already have this like solid kind of baseline. Okay. Got a nice uh, Bruce Campbell jaw on him right now. Yeah. Good. It's like Bruce Campbell, Clint Eastwood. Yeah, it's got a nice, nice American jawline there. Yeah. Yeah, this is make him American. America. <laughs> yeah. Um. So you saw Civil War with the art team. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that? I loved it. Loved it. I loved it. And you, like, you've seen all the Marvel movies, right? I've seen every Marvel movie. I, I've even made my girlfriend watch every single Marvel movie. Every one. Every one. Uh, wow. So. It was actually kind of cool. Like when I told her that we went to see the movie with the art team. Yeah. And see that the see that she was really kind of 
I guess, depressed that she didn't get to see the movie. Wow. She was like, what? You're and I was like, I was like yeah, I'm rubbing off on her. I'm doing something right. You're, yes. Good work. Very cool. Uh, <laughs> like, before I started dating her, she never saw like any of the Marvel superhero movies. She never saw Star Wars. Now she's a fan. So you can say that I'm like that Marvel comic Star Wars virus that has infected her. You infect her with the Marvel fanboyism? Yes. So, um... Without too many spoilers, like, tell me about Civil War, like, what you dig. I mean, obviously, you know, the big reveal was Spider-Man, right? So... Yeah, I can definitely talk about Spider-Man. Um, he's as legit as everyone says he is. Um, Spider-Man, there's some Spider-Man. Other, there's some other, um, I guess, surprises that happened in the movie that I can't talk about. Right. But all I'm going to say is, yo, I'm uh, Team uh, Wakanda. Wakanda? Yeah, man, Black Panther, man, he was freaking awesome. Black Panther's in there. Uh, Black Panther, yeah, he's uh, he's one of the main characters. Everybody knows about him. He's he's in the he's in the uh, posters. Okay. You got Black Panther. You got Black Panther. Got you Iron got Man. Iron Captain Man. America, Captain America. Spider Man. Spider Man. And at, in the trailer, at some point, everyone comes together. It's just an all-out battle. Yes, the old uh, airport scene. It's as cool as it's intense. Says it is. It's yeah. worth it. Yeah. I saw some beside, behind the scenes footage of it of um, Captain America. Just they put a guy on wires, so he kicks this guy in the stomach, slams him to the ground, picks him up by with one hand by the guy's leg, and just slams him into a pillar <laughs> and smashes the pillar in half. And it's like, Ouch. that is really impressive to watch them do that. Like I'd be on really wires impressed if stuff. that guy actually got up and walked away from <laughs> <laughs> well it's all movie magic and fake yeah, it was still like it was still pretty impressive like it was like okay so this is how they do it that's that's awesome I'd um, like to know what the health insurance plan is for a Marvel <laughs> stuntman for a stuntman yeah um there was that and then another one that I watched behind the scenes of was The Jungle Book which I've also I heard still pretty, need to see that I've heard a lot of good things about that one too like uh and I didn't realize that the way they do that is they just do the floor. Mm-hmm. So the floor will be all grassy and mud and stuff, real mud, and everything else is green screen. So what they'll do is they'll have guys, like, hunched over with, like, a shark fin on their back, mm-hmm. and they'll walk across the screen with some, like, um, you know, uh, ball points, uh, what do you call them? mocap points. And that'll turn into being like a lion or something that's walking through the jungle. But Dude, they ha- they awesome. want to get the blocking of like the kid like getting turned around because he like touched the shoulder on this guy. It is really neat. It's just, like it's crazy where the technology has come from. Like from Jurassic Park to Jungle Book. Yeah, Jurassic Park I think was the first movie they had guys who worked Star Wars worked on that, and that was one of the first ones to do all or not all, but a lot more digital. Mm-hmm. Um, if not, I think they did a huge like innovations. Like I'm Star Wars, like you, but we could do like we could do like a model with like a puppet, like a T-Rex puppet. And like, or we could just render it like this, like and just yeah. And this has got one of my coolest sayings, you know. It's a movie about dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. Like every time I see that movie, dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> Giving him a stiff upper lip, stiff lower lip. Yeah. Or I shouldn't say him. I don't know yet. This could be a. Yeah, very, this could be a girl. This could be a very. You know, this is an equal opportunity sculpt. Yeah. So you put, now, do you usually do you clay out hair, or is hair usually modeled by other people, or is that just kind of case by um, case, or? I usually do it all. Like, wow. Okay. That's cool. Like a lot of times, I'll do it as a separate piece, unless it's unless it's like a short haircut. Like if I have time, maybe we can uh, put some hair on this guy. Yeah. Like, hopefully I have enough time to finish him. I might be able to block in a face real quick. That'd be maybe amazing. I, maybe I should start speeding up. <laughs> yeah, Eric's I'm excited too much fun. for uh, Justice League. You I don't bummed? know, man. Are you, a little, are you bummed out after Batman vs. Superman? I will say this. Batman was awesome. I'm actually... <laughs> you're, you're about the Batfleck. Yeah. Okay. I was, I'm like, I'm a big Ben Affleck fan. I don't know if I'm in the minority for that either, but... Uh, he's, I mean, you know... The town, man. That's all I'm going to say. The town, Argo. He won a bunch of Academy Awards. You know, obviously, I'm a huge Kevin Smith fan, so Dogma, Chasing Amy, even Mallrats. Like, I'm, I'm an Affleck fan. Yeah. Except Jersey Girl. It's a little 
confused by that one, but... I don't think I've saw Jersey Girl, but I've seen every other Kevin Smith fan film, you know. I've seen... Didn't you do Cop Out? Cop Out. Yeah, he did do Cop Out. Yeah, I, did, I saw Cop Out. I saw Red State. I saw... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Your dogmas and your chasing angels. Yeah. Jane Sonic Bob. Of course, Jane Sonic Bob. You can't go wrong. What's with that. hilarious is yesterday I saw an episode of The Flash, and the episode was directed by Kevin Smith. And there was a scene that where Sonic Bob, no, actually Jay shows up, and you're like, what? Jay showing up in The Flash? I was listening to Smodcast, actually. I remember him talking about that. And he actually really? said he didn't do much on that episode because the Flash people are just, like, their crew is so tight that they just kind of, like, take control. And he's like, oh, this is awesome. Like, you guys know what you're doing. Like, I'll have a little input here, but you obviously know how to get this show doing it, and it works. He definitely had his influence on it because it's like... And I, that's, I didn't that's good to hear because his his input was like you know I I really thought it was a he, well it was, he said it was a really good experience and all that so and this was funny I didn't even notice that Jay was one of the villains okay I don't want to give up spoilers but yeah. there are like some vil- villains that show up and they said Jay was one of those villains I gotta investigate this that's fascinating what is Jay doing these days that he's Mr. Doing? Jason Mewes. That is awesome. How are we on time? Should I start? You are at 5 o'clock, mister, so... All right. You have another 30 solid minutes on your, your sculpt, so... Right, I'll no start pressure. I'll try to block some stuff in. Maybe turn him into something. He may end up being a space alien. He may end up being a she. He puts in he. You know. The power of ZBrush. You can do whatever you want. Whatever your mind's content. Jason Mewes cameo. He'll be back. That's what it says. So Jason Mewes was in The Flash, and he will be returning. What? So is uh, Kevin Smith actually um, directing the next episode, or is he just... I don't know. This is... This was like, I want to say, like, just two or three months ago he was talking about directing the episode. It's awesome. People are loving that episode, though. Man, there are tons of... Here's hoping The Flash wrote Kevin Smith a big fat check. Kevin Smith directed the best episode of The Flash. I think these people are just Kevin Smith fans. I wouldn't say it's the best episode. But it was entertaining. Yeah, I... There... Like, I had some chuckles. That's good news. Are you uh, a Flash fan? I tapped out on the uh, second Captain. I thought it was targeted more towards, like kind of like the teen audience is it is it it's, would i get it would i like like it would i appreciate it i or? think you would i'm like if you like superhero movies if you like the avengers i think you would like it i don't like the avengers i was not oh. a fan i know right i'm so, blasphemy so don't go see captain america i don't think you're gonna dig it i actually liked the first captain america the second one i was i i actually did i tapped out I tapped out on the uh, second Captain America. Man, that's like one of the better of the uh, Marvel that, movies. That's what everyone told me, and I was really surprised. And I watched it. I started watching that after I watched Ant Man because Ant Man had um. Did it feel like too much doom and gloom, or like what was the deal? Like what? Ah. What is it that you don't like about these movies? I was bored in the Avengers, and I was bored in Captain America. Did you Did you see them like when they first came out? I saw the Avengers in theaters. Okay, so... But I did not see it... When, I saw it probably like a month after everyone else had seen it. And all the hype was starting to chill. I saw it on the Sunday in a theater where it was... Like, I saw it like Sunday, I want to say at like 11 o'clock. Okay. In the afternoon. So like... Or not in the afternoon, I'm sorry. Before noon. But 11, 11 a.m. Like Sunday at 11. There's like six people in the theater... And what's happened is, like, the kid behind me is asking his mom questions about everything. And then the other kid's, like, kind of crying. And I felt like I was probably in a bad mood because of the theater. And then they're going through all the origin stories again. And I was kind of like, man. Like, how many I, times can how we many times? Yeah. Parents? Like, how do we have to see? How many times do we have to see? I thought you did 
the whole origin movies. You just have to bring them together. I felt like the first hour and a half of them bringing together. How many uh, times does Uncle Ben have to die? A lot, apparently. <laughs> you know, with this with CGI Spider Man, maybe we'll get to see him die a few more times. Um, I just I I couldn't get into that one. Now Marvel movies that did like Deadpool, loved it. Okay. Um, the first couple X Men movies I really dug. Um, especially one and two. Mm-hmm. The third one. I don't think anybody really liked. It's kind of weird. Um, I liked Ant Man. I thought that was really good, really solid. Uh, Thor was pretty good. Uh, I didn't like the second Thor, though. It was really kind of lost in the mythos of that. Captain America I thought was good. So I don't know what elements of those movies I'm looking for. I guess it's... Oh, and I liked Iron Man 1 and 2. So. Yeah. I don't think... Was there a third Iron Man? Uh, yes. Two. I don't think I saw a third one. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the one that had, like... The hundreds of thousands of Iron Man bots. Yeah, I didn't see that one. Yeah. With, like, the Hulkbusters and stuff. I never saw yeah. that one. The second one, like, I always forget about it. <laughs> but how, how could you forget about, like, the, it's got the, the chain line. whip thing? And... <laughs> oh, man, that was, that was pretty good. But, I don't know. What I look for in a superhero movie is what I'll call the Hancock factor. I like Hancock. Yeah, and it's that this movie is not fan service. It's not trying to be anything beyond what it is right now. It just wants to tell like this really, really, really great story. And I think Hancock's a great example. Where it's just like okay, I think it's like an underrated superhero movie. It's an underrated Will Smith movie because I'm not a huge Will Smith fan, but I gotta say he did a great job in that movie. Like another fantastic. one, Hitch. I like Hitch. Hitch was the uh, was that the Love Doctor it's, one? Yeah, it's the one with Kevin James. I haven't seen yes. that one. Is it good? I liked it. Then again, like I'm like a really big Will Smith fan as well. Are you a Will Smith music fan as well, or mm, just um, or just acting? I like his early stuff. Do you like to get jiggy with it? Nah, 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 nah. nah. No. Nah, I'm like more early. You know, parents just don't understand. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm going to Miami. So before, like the the. I like I like summertime though. Summertime is the summer jam. Okay, I can feel that. I'm like, that's... So you liked Will Smith when he was, like, Fresh Prince, not, like, Will Smith when it was, like, okay, uh, I, I I'm now, I'm now A-list Will Smith. Yeah. You liked it better when he was the guy, the, the Fresh Prince. Yeah. I can dig that. No. And he'll always be the Fresh Prince to me. <laughs> well, it's just interesting to see how he's evolved, because he's at the point now where, like, people don't realize that he was a musician, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, he started out in music, like, people there's, people forget that. Yeah, there's definitely a generation that doesn't know about that. They, they, don't, they don't know who Jazzy Jeff is. Oh, no, they definitely don't understand, like, I was actually just watching the other day, um, like, the Beastie Boys' first, like, appearance on Tonight Show. The Beats the Boys. It's crazy. Yes. Just like the the style, the way they talk, the way they dress, the way they act. It's just like, I kind of got like Odd Future vibes, honestly, from how wild they were. It's just like, this is really cool to see. Like, they were just 19 and nuts. Like, it was it's kinda, awesome. Yeah, it's kind of crazy because, like, they were way before their time. Yeah. Like, you look at Odd Future, I'm like, they're all punk rock, yeah. but the Beats the Boys were a punk rock band. Oh, totally. Totally. And then they were like, with like all these hip hop dudes. Like, this great. They were messing around with synths and drum machines when they were just starting to become like an affordable commodity that you could pick up, and they were doing crazy stuff with them. Like to the point where I think um, they actually made some beats that are used on like really big records. Like you'd be like, well, the Beastie Boys did that? I was like, yeah, it's like Mike D was a really solid producer. Yeah, like Mike D, like, actually one of my favorite beats of all times is probably Paul from Paul Revere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that, I think that one's like more Rick Rubin though. It's the... Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, the, the break track, the riff, the flow, it's freaking tight. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's kind of a weird antiquated music because those synths are like out of place now. Like those those drums don't sound they don't sound um, the fidelity seems off or something. You know what I mean? Like if you listen to like some eighties pop, like the the drums sound a little too 
Um, uh, they don't synth sound or um, the drums mostly, but synths too. Like they don't have quite the the airy. Well, they had the synths were really airy, which sounds solid, but the drums just sounded kind of flat. They didn't have that nice like thickness to them. But mm -hmm. you know, now modern music's like a lot of people might say overproduced because they make like a lot of similar sounds. But that '80s sound is so distinct, though. Like, you don't it's hear like any. all the, the drum machines and the keyboards and the Yeah, when you hear a Run DMC song, you know it's a Run DMC song, you know, it's just but it you wouldn't people wouldn't do that kind of beat anymore because it would sound so distinctly different than what other things sound. Like I guess there's this desire for realism maybe is a better way to put it. Like oh, they want to sound like like ant, like acoustic instrument instead of that like this is definitely a drum machine. You know? I kind of want like the old school, you know, sound to come back. Like I think we're kind of missing that. Like maybe I'm getting old, but I miss the old, the old school hip hop. It would be cool if someone actually did it. Like someone, like you know, brought back that style. Yeah. Because no one's done it. Like, be it, like synth wave and synth pop are like bringing back these like analog synthesizer sounds. Mm -hmm. So it'd be really interesting if someone could bring back like. The, that rap sound you re rap is so young I don't think anyone's gone back yet you know what I mean like you don't have bands like the Stray Cats who are doing like swing you know or like um, or Zoot Suit Rides doing like big band from the, like the 40s and the 50s and in the 90s so rap is what like 40 years old if that and, like, yeah, like we haven't had late 70s. yeah we don't have that circular where it's like alright let's have someone come back and do like the zoop do up jump you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you don't, we don't have that throwback style yet. But how awesome would it be if someone put on a tracksuit and a Flavor Flav chain and just started doing like modern Run DMC stuff with like new, like new sense? It would be awesome. It'd be crazy. Is, I, I can see it come back, man. Like, I was like watching this movie, Dope. Like, yeah, had, like, yeah, these kids yeah. I heard around. that's really good. It's on Netflix, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it's like these kids that kind of like you know they look up. And look back to like the 90s hip hop and like that's that was around the time that i discovered hip hop because before hip hop the only music that i knew about was michael jackson like okay you can ask me like what's your favorite blues record i'd be like michael jackson <laughs> what's your favorite gospel record uh i don't know michael jackson, yeah, michael jackson. <laughs> like he was the only musician that existed to me and then i heard you know tribe called quest and the rest is history i left my wallet in el Segundo. exactly <laughs> Actually, it was Benita Applebaum. That's the one that got me. All right. <laughs> no, I love all that stuff. Like, it just the flow of it is so distinct and different. And like, you hear like, um, like the waves of like how people talk, like trap music. Like Gucci Mane has a distinct way he talks, or mm -hmm. like um, more recently, like the Migos. The da -da 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 -da. Or Bone Dogs and Harmony have a similar thing. Like the cadences of how people speak yeah. is so unique to the time and the group. Like even Tupac and Biggie, it's just like it's all the same stuff. You know what I mean? Like it all has that. But like Biggie's flow is like so dope. Yeah, that is badass. It's great. It is awesome. It is, it is real, just solid. It, it's. And I think what you, we see a lot of like trends and like sounds, and we haven't seen the repetition yet in rap. I'd like to see because I think what I think happens is because rap music is produced so quickly and so frequently, and there's so many mixtapes and that culture of just like so many people are hitting it from all the attacks. There hasn't been a desire for someone to go back to like, let's do some kind of like a Run DMC throwback group. Let's do. You know, like a public enemy throwback group right now. Like, I wonder if people would even like jive onto it. Or if people would just be like, "No, think, we listen to to newer stuff." Like, I think you could probably see like more theme bands and you know theme groups come out. But the cool thing about hip hop, I think it's really about being more authentic. Yeah. And I think someone like the people that do better are the ones that have their own voice. Yeah. So, like, if you're gonna be a, if you're gonna come out and do something. What I always loved about it is just sampling is just such a powerful tool to be like, well, hip hop can literally take and borrow and reutilize and postmodernly repurpose any genre of music. You can take classical music and repurpose it. You can take anything. There's no real 
rules and structure. It's, it doesn't have that formalistic um, strictness that other genres might be stuck with. This dude is like super detailed. Yeah, he looks like a scroll right now, I guess. He's a scroll without the big forehead, I mean, without the big brow, I guess. He looks dangerous. Yeah, he's very angly. <laughs> he's our Anglo Saxon. <laughs> oh no, that's like dad joke number one. Oh, he's an Anglo Saxon. <laughs> How, um. So. When you like export something like this, does mm -hmm. it automatically populate triangles? Can you like dictate how detailed it gets? Because this is like this is all just clay right now, right? Like yeah, it's just all clay. Like like normally I go in and like mess around like with dynamics and zero mesher and yeah. Like I, I would usually like lower like the resolution of this guy mm -hmm. to just you know go in and, and and work with. But I just want to sit and talk and chat with you, man. Yeah. I don't want to be thinking about like any. Um, Complexities. This is or, totally freestyle. Yeah, this is totally freestyle. This is hip hop. Yeah, it's all hip hop. Yeah, this is hip hop here. Yeah, I think like anyone that knows me, I don't know if they would actually say that, but I yeah, man, it. I'm all hip hop. That's all I can say. Uh, I think you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, uh, I could see you sporting the uh, the top hat tracksuit. You know, definitely, I definitely want a, I want to Adidas tracksuit. I want to get my shell toe Adidas. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I can rock the chain and get around, get away with the it. The chain but is. I already got the, the big glasses, the man. I got the big Run DMC glasses. Well, because like eighty styles are coming back, so I think you can do everything except the chain. Like I think the chain comes off as antiquated. You know. Mm -hmm. Did you see um, in the winter Seth Rogen and um, Joseph Gordon-Levitt and another dude I can't remember his name did uh, like a Christmas movie. Oh man, and I wanted to did, see that movie. They did uh, one of the, like this big scenes of the movie. In the trailer, they did a Kanye West cover, but in the movie, in addition to the Kanye West cover, they did a Run DMC karaoke cover. What? And they put on the glasses and everything. What? <laughs> so you should check it out. Is you'll you'll I definitely just, dig it. I just remember seeing the um, they had like the big scene like where they were in the mall and they were jumping on the keyboard and that's, yeah, yeah, the that's what kind of kind of got me into seeing yeah it was the dum dum mm. dum you run away yeah, yeah. the actually Seth Rogen met Kanye West and apparently I can't remember which album it was it might have been Yeezus uh, they were at a hotel and Kanye's like hey come here, I want to show you something. So they go sit in his car, and he puts in all the beats for, I think it was Yeezus, mm -hmm. and he just does it live for Seth Rogen, sitting in his car. What? And he's like, what do you think? <laughs> his guy was just crazy like that, man. It was just and were these, were these beats that ended up in the album? I, I, no, it was the entire album. He had everything written out. It's just he was like, yo, this is the album. This is, this is it. Oh, that's tight. Because... Um, you know what? It might have been the album after Jesus, because I know they did that parody video of. Um, was it the, um, the Kim Kardashian one? Oh, yeah. That one. They Seth Rogen and James Franco did a parody of that, shot for shot, where they, where I think Seth Rogen. That was, video was so painful, man. Yeah. Like what, what was funny was the they were like really accurate in their depiction of the video. Like, yeah, yeah, they were. This was per like, it was on. a perfect shot for shot remake. <laughs> it's hilarious. And, and I'm like a big Kanye fan, and. I just, just, I don't know if I could like support him <laughs> doing mm -hmm. that. <laughs> it's goofy, man. And I get in a lot of trouble for being a Kanye kind of fan, but no, those are the breaks. Jesus is a fantastic album, and that, I think is that, that that might not be. I think I've listened to a couple of his albums. That's the only one that I've gone back to several times. Like Jesus is a wow. It's just, but that's also like my style of music is like minimalism and you know glitch hop and. Really, like, what are the limits of sound and like making it sound really like? Are you a fan of, um, I guess, uh, Childish Gambino? I love Childish. I love Donald Glover. He's my. He is one of my idols. I said several times in film school that I wanted to be the white Donald Glover. Yeah, the dude's like my hero. He is amazing. Amazing. Like he makes, amazing, he makes amazing. you know being a blurred kind of cool. <laughs> a blurred? Is that a black nerd? Black nerd. Yeah. Yeah. He. he uh, he he holds the uh, the reigning kingdom of that I think so it's like him and Urkel right so it's like <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if I can put Jaleel White on that but um he's Jaleel White oh he played Urkel oh, okay I gotcha gotcha he's gotcha. the actual 
He's the, he's the he's man the, behind the He's name. the artist formerly known as Urkel. Oh, that's good. I got you. Or we call him Arkel. Arkel. <laughs> yeah, Donald Glover. Um, yeah, I. a regret of mine is I was very sick. I had like a, the flu, and Donald Glover had a show called I Am Donald, and he was doing a tour. This was around the time of like when Freaks and Geeks got really big, um, the single, not, mm-hmm. not, not the, the show. And he was doing a show, and I couldn't go because I was just like, I had the flu. And I was like, man, this sucks. But he, it was like part stand up, part performance, part like, I think freestyling about Rugrats, whatever he felt like doing. Like, <laughs> just, obviously, community and everything he did for 30 Rock and all the stuff he did in college with NYU guys. Just like, you guys are amazing. Like, you're just. Was that the, um, what he did with the Mr. Man? Yeah, yeah, I forgot. Okay. What were they call that? Derek Comedy. Derek Comedy. Derek Comedy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, all that stuff, man. I remember watching that when I was middle school, seeing videos. So, so, they were just YouTube guys, right? They were they were NYU students, and I think Derek Comedy was, a, was like an improv troupe at NYU. Okay. It so, wasn't started by Donald Glover, because it seems like he's the only one that, that blew up. From. Um, I think the other two guys from Mystery Men are writers on like SNL and stuff. Or maybe not SNL, but I think they were also writers at NBC. Okay. And he might have... I think he is obviously the most successful, but I've definitely seen them do bit roles and stuff, but I think they're mostly writers. Kind of like the Lonely Island, like Andy Samberg kind of is like... Yeah. Seems but, to be the most successful, but the other guys are definitely not doing bad. Yeah, because I see them like on Saturday Night Live. Every yeah. Week. Like, I think they're all doing good for themselves. Eric, this says this reminds me of the Tick. What? Yeah. You know, I'm actually a fan of like that art style. Like that was actually a, I would say like a very inspiring time in my art life. Like the Tick, Aeon Flux, um, the Max, very big influences. And is this the live action show or is this the comic? Um, no, they were like animated, but they're based on. They're all based on comics. 1986. So yeah. again, we have your Saturday morning cartoons. You have the Tick. That is quite a jawline on the Tick. <laughs> yeah. I can see it. That's amazing, man. That's great. So you got about ten minutes left okay. to warn you. But I am pretty blown away. Do you ever name your pieces, or are you just kind of like just freestyle? I just, I'm like usually like you know lunch head. Lunch Wednesday beach. Like Wednesday, <laughs> whatever, and then it's like on to like the next thing. It's just more like this is just really good practice. It's a good way of just therapeutic. Yeah, very therapeutic. I don't think therapeutic is a word, but they're therapeutic. Yeah, but yeah. You know, you can be, you're cool, you're hip, you know, it can become a thing. You know, I this is on the internet. Thing. I'm the hippest of all. It can, it can become a meme. I am the hippest at Kingdom, I want to say. I would I say the, you are, man. I have the hippest style and flow of everybody here. I'm like, that's, that's why we're, you know, talking about the hip hops. The hip, because, the hippity hops. Yeah. I you don't, don't stop. I don't like the hippity hops. I left my wallet in El Segundo. <laughs> You gotta get it. You got got um, to get it. Oh man, there's there's this Coen Brothers movie called The Lady Killers. Oh and, yeah, is, is and the most deaf in it. Uh, I want to say most deaf is in that movie. Marlon Wayans in it. Most deaf. Marlon Wayans, Tom Hanks, okay, J.K. Simmons. So most most deaf might be in it because there's a lot of like guys that work at the casino with Marlon Wayans and I can't remember okay. all of them. Most Def's got some. Yeah, I gotta say, I used to be a big fan of Most Def, but. I against I, flesh of my flesh and mind of my mind, two of a kind, but one won't survive. Oh man. He did. Most Def was one of those guys that would work with all, like, the really solid, um, like. I don't want. I, electro is not the right word, they're just called Electro guys of, like, the 90s. So, like, he would put the rap track on, like, some, like, hitting bass and like really solid synth work and it's just like yeah I have a lot of respect for most stuff and what he was doing in the 90s but then he got into acting and I'm trying to think if he's been in anything and I'm like that's really good and I'm, nothing is coming to mind yeah I'm like I like them in was it Brown Sugar where he played a uh, he played a taxi driver 
that was an inspiring artist. I could dig that. Um, he ended up signing the T Digs rap like small rap label. <laughs> <laughs> Again, the nineties cab. The nineties was a thing. Were a yeah. thing. It was a thing. It's a thing that needs to come back. I don't know about that. There's a lot of silliness. I don't know, man. Like, Furbies, Tamagotchis. Like, do we really need this silliness again? Hey, Tamagotchi is now Pokemon. Sort of. I mean, Pokemon don't need to be fed and cleaned up after and stuff. That's really True. weird. True. Really weird fascination with Tamagotchis. Do you know what they retail for? I feel like they're really expensive. Are they, like, collector's items now? No, nah, I just wonder what they cost the time. Because I remember they... Like, that was, like, the go-to toy. So, like, what happens, like, if a Tamagotchi dies, like, you need to go to a recharge station or something? No, it's just dead. Wait, so you it pay for this dead. toy, and it's just... Oh, you can get other ones. That's lame, actually. Well, I mean, you it's, like, it spawns a new one. You can, there's different ones. Tamagotchi's weird. I actually kind of... So, like, they're the original permadeath game, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, basically a permadeath game. So you have to actually pay to get another Tamagotchi, or are you just... Um, that's kind of lame, man. No, no, I don't think so. You, you can respawn, you can, it's kind of like you hatch a new egg, and you have to start all over again. Okay. But it doesn't love you anymore, and you gotta feed it, and it won't, like... Well, that's good, like, you can kind of save a little bit of money, I guess. Kind of. Kind of. Twitch plays Tamagotchi, get out of here. This is a thing... Oh my. Blue. This week on Twitch. Twitch plays. Tamagotchi. Here's the new challenger for Twitch. Twitch plays Tamagotchi. When did this start? <laughs> oh, this How is old is this? It was like. It was probably the episode from like last night. It is live right now. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> oh no, I'm sorry, it's not. Tamagot Twitch. That's brilliant. Thank you, everyone. I, my favorite was Fish Plays Pokemon. What? Which is where it was a beta fish. And based on where it was in the bowl, it might have been a goldfish. Where it was in the bowl, it was all mapped to different buttons. So where the fish swam determines, like, what happened. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's horrible. Tamagotchi needs discipline. It is live. It's dead. What happened to Twitch Plays Tamagotchi? I need to know this. I guess didn't get. I only got three hundred followers. Pop go to weasel because the weasel goes pop. <laughs> That's uh, another old school rhyme. Rap for you kitties out there. Third base, go look them up. Third base. Yeah. You know MC Search. No, I don't. Oh. Uh, I am musically very uneducated, which is weird because I make music. Kind of so like I feel like, right, man, like you. I think your your taste is a little bit more diverse than mine is. So. Well, I wish I knew more than I do. I really don't know much. I just kind of like what I like, but I'm also kind of out of it because there's so much music now. With I mean, I love Spotify's Weekly Discover because I would never listen to new music if I didn't have that. Mm -hmm. But I'm really out of it when it comes to just anything. You know, it just it's so hard. Very hard unless you have you're constantly asking for musical recommendations and you're really listening to whole albums and really getting into stuff and you know then Prince dies and you're like well hold on gotta go some Purple Rain again and then be very sad and just, uh, yeah like did yeah, they ever before, get a final on him yeah before he passed away and I'm not saying it just because he died but like Purple Rain was one of the movies that I had to watch at least once every year alongside. The Last Dragon, Ferris Bueller's Days Off, Goonies, all the Star Wars movies. <laughs> You're such an 80s baby. Yeah. It's clear. Or I should say 70s, 80s and baby. And there was like a movie called The Wood. I love that movie. The Wood? That it's about Inglewood. Oh, is it a hood movie? Um, kind of, but it's not. That's what I like about it. Coming of Age film. Yeah, directed got... by, oh, Omar Epps? Tay Diggs? Richard T. Uh, who is Richard T. Jones? He didn't blow up, apparently. I know the other ones. Why did I get married? Why did I get married too? All right, so you weren't as lucky as the other guys. <laughs> I did like Why Did I Get Married. It's another good. That's Chris a Chris Rock, Rock movie, movie, right? Yeah. He directed that one, or did he direct his Marie? No, he Chris did... Rock. Well, I think he. 
I don't think he directed that one. That's he Tyler directed Perry? his next movie, I think. No, no Tyler Perry didn't do it. Tyler Perry directed Why Did I Get Married. Not hating that? What? what? Yep. Oh, Why Did I Get Married? Yeah, yeah. He directed oh, okay, well, never mind. I'm going to take back what I was talking about. Oh, the movie I was thinking about is I Think I Love My Wife. Oh, yes. yeah, that, that did look really good. I'm not hating on Tyler Perry. I'm just... I'm not saying that that's not a good movie. I wanted to see the movie where Tyler Perry didn't direct it. It was based on like a Tom Clancy novel where Tyler Perry's ripped and he's doing like bicep curls and the guy like threatened his wife and the trailer is him just like doing bicep curls. Was like, that the one with the guy from Lost? I think so. Some creepy looking white dude. Yeah, he... That movie looked good. Isn't that good? I think it was alright. I, I remember renting it on uh, Redbox. And I was like, yeah, it's, it's alright. Like Chris Rock did direct I Think I Love My Wife. Although Louis C.K. helped write it. Yeah, because yeah. they also work together on Pootie Tang, which is hilarious. Okay, Pootie Tang's another one I put on that list. I wouldn't say I have to watch it every Watate. year. Watate. <laughs> I've seen that movie a lot of... It's just weird and stylized. So I think time's up, Brandon. Oh, but no! What I didn't we got? finish. But it's pretty we solid, got though. something. That's awesome. It looks like a dude with some stuff. Yeah. Eh. What's the story? Or you just draw him and then you save uh, him and then he goes onto your hard drive and disappears forever? He's like a lot of really cool shapes. Maybe Strong I can do drawing. more with him in the, in the future. And That'd be awesome. So, Love cool. to have you back. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you guys for watching. We'll be back next week with exciting stuff. Talking about exciting things upcoming from King Games. And next back time, next back channel, we'll see where Chris got his wallet from El Segundo. Yes. Peace out. See you later, everybody. <laughs>